This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. On today's episode, we'll be talking about world-renowned record producer Phil Spector. Oh, dear God. (laughs) Why do you say it like that? Phil Spector. Oh, okay. No, Uh, you're good. Yeah, we'll be talking about Phil Spector and the 2003 murder of Hollywood actress Lana Clarkson in Spector's Castle. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a crazy. Yeah, I know the story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that story, and we're also going to play the Wheel of Death with a very lucky contestant. We also have two new prizes on the wheel, so stay tuned for that. All of that and more today on Two Murder Morons. always late with that i was not always late i was today <laughs> you okay you're not always late but i was like really late on that one I it's very i was thinking something else and i don't know and then i'll say you're that way <laughs> all of a oh, sudden shit, yeah. i'm doing it yeah and, oh i gotta join shit okay Man, join in. It happened too fast. Oh, good lord! Well, well, welcome, hey, welcome. everybody. Hello. Welcome to the show. My name is Andy. Sitting across from me, as always, is my good buddy Mike. Hey. It's a Mike. It's a Mike. It's a Michael. And this is two murder morons. It definitely is. <laughs> we are. We are complete idiots. We are. Uh, first thing we got to do. Very first important. Important. We owe somebody a shout out. We do. Uh, so Vicky, as you watch this, thank you very much for becoming a dork pants level member, member. Yep. on buy me a coffee. Um, your support does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. We really appreciate you becoming our newest executive producer. Yep. 100% appreciate it. Yeah. So thank w- you. Welcome to the two. Welcome aboard. Murder morons family. Yep. If you want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trip. So if anybody else out there wants to become an executive producer like Vicky and see your name on the screen and get bonus episodes and all that good stuff, yeah, consider becoming a member at buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons or click the QR code on your screen. There you go. That was easy. That I got it, got it out that got time. It down. People don't see behind the scenes that yep. that was the seventh time I said that line and I had to craftfully edit it out. And he couldn't look at me when he did it. I can't I cannot look at you. Because you, I don't think you realize you do it, but whenever we're doing an intro or something, you, you're you motionless like this, and your eyes squint. Mm-hmm. So out of the corner of my eye, I just see you like, it's like you're waiting on me to mess up. Probably. Probably. <laughs> and, you're, and you're right. I yeah. usually do. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah I'm just waiting. <laughs> Yep. What we, just what, want to call it out. What want to we, catch it. What were we saying earlier? Like, we'll get a 45 minute episode, but people don't realize it's like three hours yeah, that we're here. Exactly. And then we got to edit a whole bunch of crap out. Yep. Oh, man. So, Phil Spector. Yeah. He's a, mm, yeah. He's a hoot. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure pretty much everybody watching this has heard of this case, but. I mean, he's a, I mean, dude, I mean, he created some. He created the wall of sound. I know. That's the thing is he is. He was such an accomplished. Where did it go wrong? Uh, well, that's the thing. Like, how how do you take such a reputation and tarnish yourself like that? Like, I know. but if if you notice, like, he looked normal for the longest time, and all of a sudden, something happened downhill, and he just became a whole new person. Yeah, not good. No, no yeah, not in a good way. Yeah. Well, and the reason, so the reason uh, we decided to do this episode, there's a new Netflix documentary. Um, if uh, anybody's interested, it's called Homicide Los Angeles mm-hmm. or yep. Los Angeles Homicide. It's brand new. Brand new. It just came out. Just came out in July. Um, and that's the first episode of the first season of that. And it's a really good documentary. Yeah. Like, I like to I like to think we do a good job, but like, we don't do a good job like Netflix or, does. Oh, uh, yeah. I do. You know, you know those. Yeah. Yeah. Been doing it forever. So when you get done watching this, yeah, shoot if you there. got Netflix, yeah. shoot over there and watch it because it's awesome. Yeah, and we're not getting paid anything for saying that. Oh yeah, no, I wish we were. Yeah, but yeah. but we're definitely not. No. So what do you think? Should we jump right in? Get her done yet? Oh, oh! I almost found myself on the uh, airboard. Yep. I didn't get my disclaimer. Oh man! 
<laughs> and I didn't want to say anything. Uh, Damn it. Yeah, I know. You were going to let me fall into that trap. I was. So real quick, if you are listening to us right now on your favorite podcast platform, we're going to start talking about some pictures. And you're going to be like, why the hell are these two talking about pictures when they're on an audio podcast? Well, they're because well, they're morons. Well, well, yeah, they're idiots, Yeah, which is true. True. But um, we are primarily a video podcast. So if you're listening and would like to watch, see what we're talking about, YouTube and Spotify, best places to well, check it out. The only places yeah. to check us out. Yeah. Um, and while you're at it, uh, go ahead and smash that like, subscribe, notification button. That helps us out. We've been getting a lot of new subscribers sure lately. Have, sure makes have. Makes feels awesome, doesn't it? Went up it? like 50 in like, what, three days? Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. It, it, it feels good. It does. So yep. click it. If you haven't already. Yeah, do it. Click it right now. Yep. All right, you ready to get with this going? Get it undid. All right. All right. This beautiful young lady right here, mm-hmm. this is Lana Jean Clarkson. Uh, she was born April 5th, 1962, and unfortunately uh, was murdered, quite frankly, yeah. on February 3rd, 2003. She's an American actress and fashion model. Uh, during the 1980s, she rose to prominence in several sword and sorcery films. Yeah, she was uh, um, Barbarians. Yes. Yes. She was, what was her name? Uh, I remember she got injured on it, too. Yep. Broke her both her wrists or something. Yep, and that's kind of what got her out of... Yeah, acting for a while. Acting and modeling for a while. Uh, in 2003, record producer Phil Spector shot and killed Clarkson inside his home. Well, his castle. His castle. As we'll come to call find it out. castle. Yeah. Uh, he's tr- he was charged with second-degree murder and convicted in 2009. Yep. So... I just, you know, uh, you know, it's difficult when you have a story like this because we do have an accomplished music producer. Yeah. But I don't really want to focus on him because he's clearly a jackass. Correct. So we will touch on some of the things he did, but I wanted to give more spotlight to her Her. and her life and her accomplishments because I I feel like we should honor her in that way more than be like, let's make a celebrity out of this. Phil Spector. Out of Phil Spector, who's a creepy ass hat you know yeah. what i'm saying oh yeah i get it okay he was majorly creepy so clarkson's early life okay all right she's born in long beach california to donna and james m clarkson and was raised in the hills of sonoma county okay sonoma's beautiful you ever yes. been to sonoma oh yes oh well, it's awesome. down california it is awesome um she had a brother jesse j clarkson and a sister fawn while living in Northern California, she attended Cloverdale High School and Pacific Union College Preparatory School. Do you have any family named Kelly? Kelly? Yeah. Clarkson? Oh, just checking. Got moron. No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I don't think there's a relation there. Okay. That I know I just of. Just thought I'd ask. That I know something of. popped out. Hmm. During the Christmas season of 1978, Clarkson's family returned to Southern California and settled in the San Fernando Valley region of Los Angeles. Oh, very nice area. After Clarkson's um, after Clark, Clarkson's family moved back to Los Angeles County, she pursued a career in the entertainment industry as an actress and a fashion model. Mm-hmm. In the early 1980s, Clarkson landed bit parts in film and television. She made her screen debut as a minor character in Fast Times at Ridgemont Ridge High. High. That Love is that a, movie. That is a great movie, isn't it? Yes. I watched it on HBO. I saw the movie theater. Did you really? See, yeah. you're aging yourself again. I, I don't think I was... Yeah, I wasn't well, born yet. I, I think I went with my sister, maybe. Yeah, she was nine years older than I was. Now I'm gonna sound. I'm gonna sound like a real idiot. Is that all right? All right? All right? Or am I thinking of something completely different? Think there's something different. God, I'm an idiot. Leave a comment. What movie is that from? I don't know. It's not that though. All right, all right. That's what's his name. Does all the Cadillac commercials now? He's real weird now. Um, famous Hollywood actor. All right. All right. All right. Mr. Soderbergh. I'd like to use this opportunity to take my shirt off. Yeah. Uh, like, Matthew yeah. McConaughey. Yeah, McConaughey, yeah. What's that? For, what movie was that that he did back then where he's like, all right, all right, all right. That's not Fast Times. Or no, he wasn't in Fast Times. God, I'm an idiot. We're going to get so many comments. And no wonder everybody loves you. Because <laughs> uh, they're all old people. They're like my age. <laughs> of my generation. <laughs> so, <laughs> in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which apparently I need to watch again because uh, I'm clueless Yeah, you it. do. That's an awesome movie. It was a director, Amy Heckering's coming-of-age comedy. And Lena uh, played the wife of science teacher, Mr. Vargas. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> really? I mean, I didn't know that's her, but yeah, I know oh, the movie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. The, Vargas. <laughs> the film was her first speaking role. She also appeared in Scarface, 1983. Mm-hmm. We, I mean. If you don't know that, you're an idiot. Yeah. You got to love Scarface. Yeah. 
um, and she uh, played behind Michelle Pfeiffer dancing on the floor of the Babylon Club. As an actress, Clarkson became best known for her five feature films for producer Roger Corman. Okay. Beginning with his fantasy film, Death Stalker, 1983. I don't think I ever saw that. I've, I don't, actually, I don't know if I've ever heard of that. You know, yeah. it's one of those things I bet if we looked up clips, we'd be like, ah, oh, oh, I, I remember, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, she played a female warrior and love interest to the title character played by Richard Hill. Okay. Corman oriented his films towards young male viewers. No shit. Uh, those movies why. back then. Yeah. <laughs> Using a mix of action and female nudity. Hmm. Clarkson's work in Death Stalker led her being offered the title role in Corman's next film, Barbarian Queen. That's it. Yes. The 1985. Queen. Yes. It's a role Corman referred to as the original Xena. I remember this movie. <laughs> yeah. I remember that too. But see, aimed at young boys because yeah, yeah. they're basically walking around. Heck yeah. Topless at the time. Well, yeah. pretty much. Pretty much. Um, but but the director referred to her as referred to it as the original Xena because of the parallel and featuring a strong female leading character in an action oriented sword swinging role. Yeah, those movies are badass. Yeah, better than what that movie Jane Fonda was in. Which one was that? Oh God, I can't remember what it's called. I, I, it may come to me. That's right. Leave a comment if you know what Mike's talking about. Yeah. We need to watch all these. Yeah. Uh, in 1987, Clarkson appeared in the John Landis spoof, Amazon Women on the Moon. Okay. <laughs> Don't think I've seen that one. Uh, no. This must have been John Landis's first movie, maybe. Following that, Clarkson starred in Roger Corman's Barbarian Queen sequel, Barbarian okay. Queen 2. Okay. Very creative name for I a have sequel. I see that one. I haven't yeah. seen that yet. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't say the full title oh. here. It is Barbarian Queen 2, colon, The Empress Strikes Back. Okay. All right. So her wrist healed up and she's back. <laughs> well, I think that was after this, wasn't it? I think that's what ended her. Uh, I, I can't I don't remember know which one it was. Clarkson starred as a supporting character in the period horror film The Haunting of Morella in 1990. Okay. As the evil attendant to a young woman played by model actress Nicole Eggert. In the film, Clarkson played a dominating lesbian character who tries to resurrect the spirit of a witch burned at the stake during the Salem witch trials. This actually, I kind of want to see this. Not yeah, in the description. Okay. In her final film for Corman, Vice Girls, nineteen ninety six. Vice Girls, okay. obviously, probably aimed, probably aimed at, at cops. Her yeah. Vice working. <laughs> Clarkson played one of three cops. Oh, she played a cop. Oh, okay. Uh, who posed as strippers to catch a serial killer? No. Oh. I'm going to have to check that one out. Too. Check that one out. Yeah. yeah. Add that to the police movies I've seen. <laughs> right. Clarkson's work in the B movie sci fi genre inspired a cult following. She was, po I remember being yeah, a young, pretty, young pretty kid. And I think, po I don't think I had a poster. I think I remember posters being out there in people's bedrooms. I never had one of her. I always had Sarah or a fair faucet. But um, because of this cult following, she was very popular at comic book conventions. Okay. Uh, where she made some promotional appearances, signing autographs for her fans. Cool. She appeared in numerous other B movies as well as a range of television spots. She also appeared in commercials from Mercedes Benz. And I'm sorry, I just <laughs> when I read that I was thinking of the Mercedes, well, <laughs> which isn't her. Yeah. But have you seen those? Yes. And then all the parodies of <laughs> Fire Truck. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway, I'm sorry. She appeared in commercials for Mercedes-Benz, Kmart, N Nike, Mattel, and Anheuser-Busch. Kmart. Kmart? That's Man, a blast. Red light past. special. Good Lord. Wasn't that Kmart close around the one we had? Mm. I mean, we're probably talking at least 10 years ago, right? Well, probably, yeah. I think that building's been sitting empty at least a decade. Probably. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. Yeah, that was the last one. I mean, well... Well, last one in our area, anywhere well, close. Well, but it's one of, like, one of the last retail stores of that era. Mm. You know, because you had them, Airway, and Zare. Zare closed down early, uh, late 70s. Airway became Target. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then Kmart. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, her television appearances included parts on Night Court. Okay. God, remember Night Court? That man? was a good show. Then they remade it. Have you seen the remake? It's, it's I don't horrible. think it's very good. No. It's so hard to try and remake those class. You know, it's like if they tried to remake Cheers. Yeah. 
it'd be t- no matter how good the actors and the writing was, mm-hmm. it, it would everyone would say it's terrible. This is like chips and all that stuff they made into movies. It's like uh, should have just chips Baywatch should have just, just brought back uh, the original guys and had them work as retired yeah. security guards somewhere. What are some Hawaii Five O they tried to bring back? Yeah, uh, the Fall Guy. Yeah, eight was there an A team? No, there wasn't an A team. Yeah, there was an A team oh. a few years back. I'm thinking Magnum PI. Yeah, another one. That yeah. one's kind of mm. yeah. You just can't re- you can't make up those shows again. Yeah, yeah. So she had uh, she had parts of Night Court, Silk Stockings. Remember Silk Stockings? Mm-hmm. I hit, I won't go into that. Did you hit your puberty at R- that point. Yeah, I was yeah. hitting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Riptide. Okay. Three's Company. Yeah. Night Rider. That's right. She was on Night Rider. Yeah. Yes. And Wings. You remember Wings? Jesus, yes. God, I loved Wings, man. Was that two seasons? I don't remember. I don't remember at all. I, I just know I loved two. it. I think it made two seasons. I just know I love that show. That was a good show. And she also had a guest appearance as a villain on the television adaptation of Roger Corman's film Black Scorpion. Okay. In what would be her final role. Clarkson traveled around the United States and Europe while working on fashion photo shoots. Oh, okay. Other projects took her to Japan, Greece, Argentina, Italy, Switzerland, France, Jamaica, and Mexico. She'd been all over the place. Heck yeah. In the 1980s, she volunteered weekly at the AIDS charity project Angel Food, which uh, delivers food for those in Los Angeles disabled by HIV or AIDS at a time when the disease was greatly feared by the general public. Mm-hmm. So she's, you know, she's not one of these celebrities that's just... Yeah. You know, she was like, and it's not like she was like A list, A list, but she was still giving her money, her time. Yeah. Which is very commendable, I think. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, when AIDS came out, they, oh, yeah. They scared us with the show, like these videos in school. I was in high school. They were like trying to scare us. Oh, yeah. I was freaked out. Yeah. Uh, Clarkson's career stalled as she approached her 30s. Unable to earn a living as an actress, Clarkson sought alternative sources of income, including operating her own website on which she sold autographed DVDs of her films and communicated directly with her fans on her own message board. Okay. So it's kind of like an er- like early Patreon or yeah, buy me like a coffee. An yeah, early blogger and yeah. Yeah. I was going to say only fans, but I don't want to offend. I don't think uh, because I mean, it could uh, be. I know everyone, you hear OnlyFans, and I you know. think porn and nudity, porn nudity. But there are people on there that are just... Yeah, there's just people that show you how to, how, to, how to rebuild an engine. Right. Things like that. There are people out there that have an actual legitimate... Yeah. Like, really, OnlyFans is just another, like, Patreon. Yeah. Really. Just wait for and, them to make money. And some people started using it for certain things, which they allowed, and now it kind of has the reputation it has, but... Yeah. 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 Although she made a living playing sex symbols, Clarkson wished to be a comic actress or perform as a comedian. Oh. Her publicist friend, Edward Lazzi, told Vanity Fair writer Dominic Dunn that Clarkson had been working on a stand-up comedy act that he had witnessed. Really? Apparently, okay. it's pretty good. Okay. So she's a funny... So she's attractive. Yes. She, she was attractive. She's funny. She does charity work. Yep. Like, she seems like an awesome woman. You know what I mean? In 2001, while living in Venice, California, uh, for the last several years, Clarkson developed, wrote, produced, and directed a showcase reel titled Lana Unleashed. Hmm. She took a part-time side job as a hostess in early January 2003 at the House of Blues in West Hollywood. Yes, because uh, she wanted to get refounded again. Right. Well, she had to make ends meet. Well, she didn't have a lot that's of... the place to work, though. Oh, yeah. Because of the clientele. Exactly. Well, and who does she meet while working <laughs> yeah. at it's the so, House of Blues? It's so funny how they met. Have you heard that story? No, go tell it, yeah. Like, when he came in, yeah, she thought it was a she. Yeah. She thought it was Mrs. Spectre, but didn't, she really didn't know who he was. And she called him that. Yeah. Right? She said, like, ma'am or something yeah, to yeah, him, and yeah. I think it pissed him off. Yeah. Yeah. And so the manager came over that knew him, of course. He was like, hey, do you not know who this is? <laughs> right. Do you not know how much of a tip you're going to lose? And she's like, no, I don't know who this <laughs> guy is. is. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. So she thought he's a lady. <laughs> but it kind of, uh, you know, this part, what I'm about to say is like, oh, Lord, oh, Mike. Shit, I got the table. <laughs> Crap. This part's unconfirmed, but I can see where, okay, so now you've offended this 
Yeah. Big celebrity music producer. Now you have to do some mask. So now I can, I can see her going and apologizing. I can get you whatever you need. And then that kind of leads into, mm -hmm. you know, once he's over being offended, now it's like, oh, she's paying attention to me. And she, you know, you start flirting. And but it makes you wonder, was he really over the offense? That's true. That's true. Because, you know, I mean, a few hours later. Because, uh, yeah, what's about to come? Yeah. Yeah. So this here, this is Phil. This is a very, he's on the left. Yep. Can you tell who that is on the right? Uh, just Mr. Lennon. Yeah, that's John Lennon. So I just wanted to touch, I thought it was important to just touch on some of the people he worked with. Just oh, so yeah. if, if someone didn't know the story or who he was, you at least get the gravity of the celebrity he was at the time of this. Um, so he worked with, well, he the, the Wall of Sound. Yeah, Wall of Sound. Which everybody, I mean, he's worked with the Beatles. Yeah. Ike and Tina Turner, Righteous yep. Brothers. Righteous Brothers. Um, he's nominated for three Grammys and and won one of those in 1973 for the George Harrison album, or George Harrison and Friends album. Yes. Um, in 1989, he's inducted into the Rock and Hall Fall, Hall of Fame. In 1997, he's inducted into the Songwriter Hall of Fame. And he's given the Grammy Trustees Award in 2000. Yeah, he just, he had a, he had that year for uh, music. Yeah, and it just he you knew how to how to become being famous, and yeah, everybody wanted to work with Phil. Phil was the guy to work for. Yeah, so let's let's bring up a here's a so yeah he's yeah I could see why he she thought that was Mrs. Specter. I get it. So this is more of a you know this is obviously him. This is him a trial. At one of his trials, the first first go the around. first the first go around, he looks even crazier. <laughs> oh, I go around, but um, I just wanted you know this is approximately what he looked like when meeting Miss Clarkson at the House of Blues mm -hmm. was yeah very yeah. similar. You know, this is just a year or so after, so mm -hmm. this is this is what he he. I mean, he's he's a weird kind of a weird looking yeah looking guy. You know, and he, uh, the funny thing is, well, not funny, but he didn't have to serve any time in jail until. Till his uh, conviction. Yeah, he paid his bail money. Oh yeah, because he had it. Yeah. Well, let's get let's get into where he lives, and, and well, these people will see. I think this is the weirdest house. I've it is ever very seen. weird. But look at the owner. Well, yeah, very eccentric. Yes. Yeah. Eccentric. Eccentric. If I can say that. Yes. Correctly. Eccentric. Very eccentric. So in the early hours of February third, two thousand three. Clarkson meets record producer Phil Spector while working at House of Blues. We just mm -hmm. talked about the whole interaction, interaction they had. The two were driven in Spector's limousine at the end of the night to his mansion, which was called the Pyrenees Castle, located in Alhambra, California. It's like the only major house in Alhambra. <laughs> yeah, like every other house is normal. Yeah. You know, I have a good photo it's, to show. It's like this house should have been in a different part of, of L.A., it was like in the wrong right. section. It's, it's mis it's mismatched. Yes. So here here real quick, um, this is a photo of the castle, and you can't tell much is off here about where it's at. Yeah. I mean, this is a good photo of it. Now let's show you. This reminds me of this yeah. is like Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like the gas castle in the middle of. Yeah. There's all these homes that are. I mean, they're they're good size homes. Yeah. But they're the peasants. It, it's almost like a. <laughs> It's like a suburb. It's like suburbia. Mm -hmm. And then there's this random plot of land that has this up on a hill that has yeah. this giant castle on it. Yep. It's so, is it not Edward Scissorhands? It is. It really is. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody looking up, like, oh, it's Phil that, Spector's that, castle yeah, Phil, up there. Yeah. King Phil. It's so weird. So the driver drops him off out front. Well, they, originally, the reason why she went with him was because. She, wasn't she going with him to help him because he was so drunk? She just wanted to make sure he made it home okay. And well, obviously, we'll never know. Which I really don't understand why she did that because he had a limo driver, right? It's going to make sure he makes it home okay. Obviously, we'll never know the story because yeah. she's not here to Correct. explain. Yeah. But but from that documentary I watched on Netflix, you know, basically they said yeah he was very heavily intoxicated and she was basically helping him to the car. And I guess at some point he yeah. either asked her to come back or. She offered or, or something. Yeah. It's um, weird. But but see, I think it plays into the mistake. Yeah. You know, she's still trying to make up for calling him a ma'am. Mm -hmm. So anything he's at, you know, he's drunk, he's fallen down. He's this little scrawny, 
you know, compared to her. Oh yeah. You know, he she's not thinking, what can this guy do to me? You know, he's this little older guy and he's drunk and oh, I need help getting in my house. And she probably still, you know, now that we know about her doing yeah, charity, work, charity and work and everything, she yeah. probably still feels atrocious that she called him ma'am or whatever. And, and we know she wants to get back into the field of acting and all that. And she doesn't want him tarnishing, you know. Right. Yeah. So uh, later that morning, they get dropped off. Driver is waiting outside. Yeah. The limo driver. Later that morning, she's found dead in the mansion. Um, her body was found slumped in a chair uh, with a single gunshot wound to her mouth with broken teeth scattered over the carpet. Specter's driver, Ad- Adriano de Souza, I'm sorry if I messed that name up. Which wasn't his regular driver. His right. Backup driver. Yeah. It was a, his driver was sick, sick or on vacation something. or yeah. something. So the driver says Specter came out of the house holding a gun mm-hmm. and said, quote, I think I killed someone. To, to the limo driver. Which, and the limo driver took off running. Yeah. <laughs> around the bill, around the house. Yeah, get the hell get out the hell of away. here. Get the hell away. Called 911. Yeah. And was like, uh, here's what's going on. You yeah. Know? This is what I know. Um, interestingly, Spectre's fingerprints were not found on the supposed firearm. Yeah. Which, obviously, you got time to. And he had no residue either. Right. So, according to the prosecution, Spectre had previously pulled a gun on a woman. There, he's got a history yeah, of pulling yeah, guns yeah, out. Yeah, he's got a history of uh, pulling his gun out many times. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry. I even read that wrong. According to the prosecution, Spectre had previously pulled a gun on four different women. Yeah. So this isn't something that's happened once before. Four this, times this before is the this. Time. This is now right. In each case, he had been drinking and was romantically interested in the woman, mm-hmm. but grew angry after the woman turned him down. Turned him down. Ugh. Because women don't turn down Phil Spector. Right. I'm, don't you know who the hell I am? Yep. Don't you know how much money I have? You're not impressed yeah, by it. my castle? castle? Yeah. Ooh. Um, the prosecution alleged that on each occasion, he pointed a gun at the woman to prevent her from walking out. So I can see he's coming on to him. They're like, eh, you're kind of scary, dude. Which was kind of weird, too, because when he used to, when he would go in a room, like when they come in the house, he'd hide the key. He'd lock it, lock the right. lock. So there's no way to get out. Yeah, he didn't want them to leave. Yeah. And if they try to leave, he pulls a gun and points it at their face. They can't get out anyway. I mean, there's no way for them to get out unless they jump through the window. Yeah. <laughs> the prosecution argued that the testimony of the other women was important in demonstrating a, quote, common plan or scheme. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all premeditated issues. The defense sought to prevent the women from providing such testimony. Obviously, I think if you're yeah. a good defense lawyer, you're going to try and fight that. Correct. That's pretty damning. Correct. Um, though the law generally forbids the introduction of evidence showing a defendant's previous transgressions, the judge ruled the testimony can be used to show lack of accident or mistake. Mm-hmm. So they allow. Well, uh, I mean, look how they've, they've had some pretty unsuccessful uh, trials in the, come out of that courthouse. Right. True. <laughs> True. You know, especially with some of these famous people. Yeah. I think they kind of changed the, the game. Spectre remained free on a $1 million bail while awaiting trial, which he paid. He paid, yeah. Uh, the trial began on March 19th, 2007. Presiding Judge Larry Paul Fiddler allowed the proceedings in Los Angeles Superior Court to be televised. Mm-hmm. I, I remember seeing clips of this. At the start of the trial, the defense forensic expert Henry Lee. Man, we talk about Henry Lee. I love Henry Lee, man. He's used a lot. He, he's awesome. Uh the, but the defense accused him of hiding crucial evidence that the district attorney's office claimed could prove Specter's guilt. Correct. On September 26, 2007, Judge Fiddler declared a mistrial because of a hung jury, 10, uh, 10 to 2 for conviction. Yes. So 10 of the jurors against two of the jurors. So it ends in a, in a hung jury. Yeah. Uh, but well, because they were, he, they, the defense was going off and it was a suicide. Right. That's the whole. Yeah, and I didn't touch on that yet. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously his claim is she, she came out uh, there and killed herself. I don't yeah. She came she she pulled the gun out of the little table there next to that chair in the hallway. Because it's his gun. Yeah. That came out of a holster in his little hall yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. Even though he made he made a reference to his driver and the first the first officer on the scene that 
I think I killed someone. You said that twice. Right. But then, but the, then he backtracks when he gets attorneys. Well, and the crazy part is one of the officers started audio recording while at, yeah. on the scene. And the audio recordings of him, he's walking around. You can tell he's drunk by his voice. You know, and he's like, well, this stupid, you know, stupid bitch. Who comes into someone else's house and offs themselves? So he's already trying to spin that web. Spin the up. wheel, yeah. I don't know what happened. We came home, and next thing I know, I heard a gunshot, and I came in here, and she had put a gun in her mouth. And yeah. I don't I don't know what happened. Yeah, her teeth are everywhere. Jeez. What happens when you shoot yourself in the mouth? Before and during the first trial, Spencer went through at least three sets of attorneys. Defense attorney Robert Shapiro. He didn't want to go to prison. Oh, yeah. He was doing everything he could to prevent going to prison. Yeah. So that's why he kept going through he attorneys. Kept, when he didn't like what one yeah. attorney was doing, time for a yeah, new one. Time for a new one. So uh, defense attorney Robert Shapiro represented Specter at the arraignment and early pretrial hearings, which w- – Who's Robert Shapiro? Yeah, OJ out of it. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, and I mean Kardashian. Yeah. No, I, that was a dumb. That wasn't Shapiro. That was one of the other during the OJ trial. One of the other attorneys that worked with Shapiro. Uh, Kardashian. Kardashian. Um, yeah. I'm an idiot. Moron. Right. Right. Two murder morons. Um, anyway, Shapiro was the one that represented him in the very beginning and was able to achieve his release on the one million dollar bail. Bruce Cutler came in and re- represented him during the 2007 trial, but withdrew on August 27, 2007, claiming, quote, a difference of opinion between Mr. Spector and me on strategy. Yep. Attorney Linda Kenny Baden then became lead lawyer for closing arguments. Because I figured if he had a female attorney, he might help. Yeah. he He's just... He's, well, he's trying everything he can. Grasping at straws. He don't want right? to go to prison. He's yeah. a millionaire. He's got a nice life. He don't want to go to jail. That's <laughs> a... Jesus. <laughs> this this is him in the second trial. Yeah. Dude, that hair, man. <laughs> it's Dude, I thought I looked bad with my hair growing out. Jesus. He's out there. <laughs> man. Oh man. The retrial of Spectre for murder in the second degree began on October twentieth, two thousand eight, just a year later, with Judge Fiddler again presiding. This time it was not televised. The case went to the jury on March 26, 2009. So that's a long trial started October 20th, but goes to the jury March 26. That's mm-hmm. six months. Yeah. Whew. Uh, um, it's a lot of fighting, though. I mean, they're trying to prove suicide. suicide. So they had brought a lot, a lot of a lot of people. Yeah. Um, 19 days later, after it goes to the jury on April 13th, the jury returned with a guilty verdict. Additionally, Spectre was found guilty of using a firearm in the commission of a crime, which added four years to his sentence. Spectre was immediately taken into custody and was sentenced on May 29th, 2009 to 19 years to life in the California state prison system. And you know why? Why? Well, for one, let's go backtrack a little bit. So at the scene, when, when law enforcement came out, you know, and talked to him and they did all their tests on him. He wasn't wearing the same clothes that he wore when he was at the, at the bar. Oh yeah. So he came home and he changed clothes after he shot her. Oh yeah. So, and, and he cleaned up, probably took a shower. Yep. So that, that eliminates any of that stuff. Right. And then, uh, what, what bunked the suicide was the fact when she supposedly shot herself in the mouth, her teeth went flying out. Right. If she would have shot herself in the mouth, they would have went in. Right. You know, she was committing suicide. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's not a smart guy. No, Phil. not at all. I mean, he tried. He tried. but He should have stuck to music. But when you're... Yeah, <laughs> he should have stuck to music. Yeah. That's definitely right. Yes. Here's a... Yep. Guys. Look, I know. It's scary. And they always say prison really makes you look pretty bad in life. Yeah. It does. Yeah, I mean, he already looked bad, but... <laughs> The uh, California 2nd District Court of Appeals affirmed Specter's conviction in May 2011 and denied his request for a rehearing of the appeal shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. On August 17th, 2011, the California Supreme Court declined to review the Court of Appeals decision to affirm his conviction. So he's out of appeals. Yeah, he's done. Well, other than the U.S. Supreme Court. True. Because in December 2011, Specter's attorneys petitioned for review by the U.S. Supreme Court, arguing that his constitutional due process rights were violated when prosecutors used the trial judge's comments about an expert's testimony, effectively making the judge a witness for the prosecution. 
These are some high-paid attorneys yeah, here. Yeah, they, they know what they're talking about. Specter's attorney, Dennis Riordan, don't know if I said that right, argued the constitutional right to confront witnesses did not permit the prosecution to introduce at trial a videotape of statements made by the judge at a pretrial hearing that were never subjected to cross-examination. Yeah. Does he have a point? Does yeah. he not? Yeah, he does. You know? In February 2012, the Supreme Court denied the petition. They said, we're not going to yeah, hear about this. I want to hear about it. So he's, he's out, of, out of chances there. In July 2013, attorney Dennis Riordan filed a petition with a U.S. magistrate urging prompt action due to Specter's ill health, mm-hmm. which I would say he's probably in ill health, judging by some of these folks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he was in ill health when he shot her. Right, right. In June 2015, federal magistrate judge Paul L. Abrams recommended denial of Specter's habeas corpus petition and dismissal of the appeal. The dismissal was ordered the following month by District Judge S. James Otero, who also denied Specter's request to certify the case for further appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. They said, fuck you, sit in jail. <laughs> Have fun dying in yeah. prison. Yep. In 2015, Specter's lawyers filed another motion for a certificate of appealability to the Ninth Circuit. But they're, I mean, they're just oh, yeah, trying they're everything. They can, yeah. Well, that's what they get paid to do. Man, the man's got money still. Oh, yeah. I mean, that property alone's got to be worth. I mean, he's got enough money probably for live four lives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably more than that. Yeah. Honestly. Probably. Yeah. Specter dies from COVID 19 uh, on January 16th, 2021. While he was serving his sentence at the California Healthcare Facility, California State Prison in Stockton, California, he would have been eligible for parole in 2024. I don't think they would have. Or they him. probably shot him down. Yeah, because he probably. I mean, he's still not. I, I guarantee he would still try to use a suicide issue and not take any remorse, of, right, or, or blame, accountability, accountability for what was done. And that's the thing. Often, I think I, I'm no expert, but we watch plenty of. You know, I feel like when you're up for parole and you go in front of that board, I feel like part of that would be accountability. Yeah, they want they're what they want to see the accountability. They want right. to see that you regret what you've done and you're, you hold yourself accountable. Right. And at this point, you've been convicted, whether you did do it or not. Yeah, you are a convicted murderer. Correct. So when you go in front of the parole board, these people that are like, "I am innocent." I refuse to take. Well, of course they're not going to let you out, man. Correct. Like we got. You know how I always talk. Again, I'm not trying to make criminals better. Yeah. But like, let's let's think about this here for a second. If you go in there and you say, "Look, what I did was messed up. I've had lots of time to think about it. You know, I feel terrible for the family. I, my actions were wrong. Blah blah blah." You're going to have a much better chance. Oh yeah. Of getting paroled than coming in and saying. Screw you! I've, or, I've just spent put, all these years for no reason. Or put the blame on somebody else. Right. Oh, yeah, no, so, oh, no, it's oh, a suicide. Yeah. It was a suicide. suicide. I shouldn't even be here. Yep. I like how we're talking about it like that's what he did, but he didn't, well, he didn't even he make did, it. Yeah, he didn't make role. it, but that's what guys that get to that point do. Right. I mean, he used the wrong, and then the next thing you know, they got to wait another 10 years. Right. And they're sitting there like, well, this is bullshit. Yeah. And it's well, like, fuck well, you, I do? idiot. And of course, you know, you got family there, too, like saying, no, don't let him out. That's the reason why we don't want him out, whatever. Right. So the parole's got to take all that into account. Yeah. Which I don't think they really take that into account, honestly. Yeah, I don't know what they. Think, I'd love to talk I, to somebody that's on a parole board. I think a lot of it really. Oh, well, we, well, we, well, we could try. We could probably get hold of somebody. Yeah, yeah. I've I have so many questions. You know. Yeah. Do you know what time it is? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> we we'll love death. And I've got great news for you, Mike. We got a player. We had a whole bunch of people sign up to play after the grandma episode. So I think we're set for a while. Okay, cool. Which is good because I love playing. Yeah. So we've got some new names here, that finally. Gr- that, that grandma episode really hooked us up. I know. We appreciate all of you for yeah. watching that all, and liking all you, that. New subscribers. Yeah. Yep. And it gained us a whole bunch of Wheel of Death contestants. It did. Yes, so it we, did. we've got some names. You know, I'd love to see this bucket full. The oh, bucket yeah. of doom at some yeah. point needs to be full of names, but. There's a few in there. Yeah, we'll go so, with it. Do the honors, Mike. God, dude, I can't get my head in there. Oh, sorry. I need right, to tell oh, Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Oh. All right. Who we got? I thought I had two for there. We got Cindy. Cindy. 
All right. Well, we will get Cindy on the line here, and we'll play the Wheel of Death. All right. Let's do it. Cindy? Yep, that's me. Hey, Cindy. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hey. Hi. Hi. Mike, we got something for you. Uh Uh-oh. What do you got? Uh Uh-oh. Oh, it's the crate. Hey, the crate. Here we go. (laughs) It's the the crate to ship you in, buddy. I could probably breathe in that. Yeah, I'd be all right. I'd like to do it. I mean, (laughs) it should be a decent vacation. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now, didn't you? I think you sent me another picture of some art that you made. Did you want to show that? Uh, You don't want me to show them? I mean, you can show Mike, just nobody else, because I mean, it's like a two year old did it. Uh, okay, I'll just show. I'll show him privately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where that are you, one's where are you calling from, Cindy? Uh, Virginia. Nice, nice. I think that's our furthest yet. Yeah, that's where are you guys? Uh, we'll just say the Midwest. We like to keep that a secret. That'll work. What? Like, don't want okay. nobody throwing eggs at the house, right? Right. Exactly. We don't want to find any pig bodies on our front porch. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. But that's the fun part. One. Well, we do have some exciting news for you. There are two new prizes on our wheel of death. So we have cool. taken away two of the four death spaces and we have added um, some of our crime coffee as well as the posters that you see hanging behind us. So those are now options. And there's only two spots you could land on where you get death and you don't win anything. Okay. I still say we need to tie Mike to the wheel. Tie Mike to the wheel? Tie Mike to the wheel. <laughs> we need like a yeah. life size wheel to <laughs> yep. get a big one. <laughs> That's all. Better get a good axle on the back of that thing. Well, I think I already know the answer to this. I'm guessing you're going to pick Mike to spin for you. Nope. Oh, nope. you want me to spin? Yep. And she's oh, smart. Oh, heck yes. She's smart. <laughs> yeah, she is. Well, smart. we need such a big deal out of Mike. We need to make such a big deal out of Andy, too. Oh, uh, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I haven't spun this in a while. All right. Uh-oh. You just want me to give it all I got? Yep. Don't hurt yourself. Okay. Hold your end over there, Mike. I'm holding it. All right. Here we go. Uh, I got a feeling on this one. Uh, what? A good feeling? Uh, oh. I hope so. There you oh. Go. oh, yeah. It's now. So it's a dork pants level membership. And I know that you just joined us on the mic level, but we will gladly bump you up to the high end level there um, here tonight when we're done recording. Okay. That works for me. And I, yep. meant to say, I meant to say something earlier. We, uh, I meant to thank you because oh, I know yeah, that yeah. you also joined as a member, and we appreciate you doing that, definitely. But we'll bump you so up to that work pants level for the next year for free. Yep. Oh, that, that's cr- oh, wait till I tell the girls. They're going to die. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being a fan, and thank you for playing the Wheel of Dust, Cindy. Yep. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for being really damn cool. All right. Cool. Absolutely. Thank you. Have All a good right. evening. Bring it break, Mike. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Yeah, have a good night. You, you too. too. Well, again, congratulations, Cindy, on your uh, new upgraded. Yes. Buy me a coffee yes. membership. So she went from a. She went from a grump pants to yep. a dork fish. Yep. She's no longer in my 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 area of the world. Yeah. Grump she, ass. She is now mine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she's in my realm. But no, she got it. Now she's an exec. She went from producer to executive producer. Yep, you're so right. Now she's so. going to start seeing her name on the screen every episode and all that good stuff. Yeah. Speaking of. If you enjoyed this episode, you want to see more, we've got a ton of bonus episodes sure for do. our Buy Me a Coffee members. Yep. Uh, so head over to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons, or you can access that through our website too if you want to look cool. that way how to support us. But little is three bucks a month. You get bonus episodes, different tiers get different things, discounts on merch, executive producer recognition, yeah. so on and so forth. But the big thing is obviously the the bonus episodes. Yes. So we, we definitely have some good ones on there. I think we do. Uh, yeah. Uh, as long as we're talking about that, might as well talk about merch. merch. Uh, to murdermorons.com or click this QR code coming up on your screen. We have QR it all. Code. QR code. QR code. We have it all. Yeah. There's a ton of fun stuff on there. I mean, we got stuff all the way down to, for a dog, all the way up to underwear. <laughs> so you name it. <laughs> right. And here's the thing. This is for, you know, one, to help spread the word. Yes. And two, that is a way for you to obviously support the show if you're not into doing like a monthly Patreon buy me a coffee type thing. Yeah, pick up a sweatshirt. And, and we appreciate it. And people will probably ask you like, well, what's that? What are you wearing? What's that on your shirt? And then you get to help us. Help us. Yeah. Spread hey, the word, yeah, you know. You can check these guys out. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, again, if you're listening to our podcast right now, check out the video podcast on YouTube or Spotify. 
um, and vice versa. If you'd rather listen, we're on all the major podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, we have to give credit where credit is due. Um, I pulled much of the information um, for this episode from Wikipedia. There's three very important articles. Yes. Um, One is just the article on Phil Spector. One is the article on Lana Clarkson, and then the other one's titled The Murder of Lana Clarkson that goes into detail about the crime. Okay. Uh, but I'll link all three of those below in the description if you want to check, check them out. out. What are we doing? Am I forgetting anything? Disclaimer. Smash and like, Trevor. I think we got it. I think we got it. I think we're good. Thank you guys very yep. much for tuning in. We will see you all next, next Wednesday. Week. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thank you.